when history is written, how would you like to be remembered? Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you're new here and looking forward to Dune Prophecy, hit that subscribe button. We're hoping to hit 4,000 by the end of the year. And for all of our new subscribers, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to talk Dune Prophecy and to watch the show Sunday nights on HBO and then do a review afterwards and I'll have other videos throughout the week uh, leading up to the next episode and whatnot. I'm having a lot of fun just discussing it with you. So leave a comment in the comment section down below and we'll chat all we can about Dune Prophecy. After the machine wars, what grows up in the Dune universe is a kind of neo-feudalism and power is very unevenly distributed and there are the great houses that hold significant access to spice and to wealth. Let's see, all right, getting right into it now. The series is going to take place about 150-ish years after the war against the machines, the Butlerian Jihad. I'm excited to see the aftermath of this. I think it would be cool to get that as, as a series itself, but right now we're getting the aftermath of it. I'm really curious to see how they're going to play out. Dune Prophecy begins 150 so years after the Great Machine War. They have a behind the scenes video on it on the Max uh, channel on YouTube that you can check out. It's a really fun uh, little video to watch. If you're excited for the show, this will get you really hooked on it. Obviously, that's the plan of it and that's what it, it does. But let's get into it. I thought, you know, if this is going to take place 150 years after that, why not do a video discussing what that is? Is, talking about what it is, understanding it, and what the aftermath of the Butlerian Jihad is slash was. The machines are defeated by the human race because they become too powerful. The Butlerian Jihad stands as one of the most transformative events in the Dune universe. A brutal war that reshaped the trajectory of human civilization, this epic conflict fought over a millennium was humanity's response to the domination of advanced artificial intelligence. Thinking machines that once governed vast swaths of society, these machines designed to serve and enhance human life became oppressive overlords, sparking a philosophical and physical revolution against the dangers of unchecked technological advancement. The origins of the Jihad lie in humanity's gradual submission to the machines, a dependency that ultimately enslaved entire populations. Jihan Butler the movement's namesake and a key revolutionary emerged as a symbol of resistance. Alongside other figures like Theder Butler and Iriana, Jihan mobilized disillusioned factions rallying against the machine overlords and their human collaborators. Early operations targeted critical infrastructure, including interstellar communication networks to destabilize the machine controlled order. The conflict escalated from targeted sabotage to full-scale war. Planet by planet, the rebels dismantled the machine empire, culminating in the destruction of key machine strongholds. The victory was not merely a military triumph, but a cultural and ideological turning point. The aftermath of the Butlerian Jihad saw the establishment of strict prohibitions on artificial intelligence. This ban was enshrined in the Orange Catholic Bible's commandment, Thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind. This new paradigm forced humanity to rely on its own intellectual and physical capabilities. Institutions like the Mentats, human computers trained to perform complex calculations, and the Bene Gesserit, a sisterhood honoring extraordinary mental and physical abilities, emerged to fill the void left by forbidden technology. These groups played crucial roles in the political and social landscapes of the post-Jihad universe. The Butlerian Jihad's impact went beyond technology. It reshaped human values, emphasizing the dangers of technological hubris and the need for vigilance against the loss of autonomy. The war also laid the groundwork for other iconic elements of the Dune Saga, such as the Spacing Guild's monopoly on interstellar travel and the rise of the Freemen, who would later become pivotal allies of Paul Atreides. This event serves as a cautionary tale about the balance between innovation and control, a theme that echoes throughout the Dune series. The struggle against the thinking machines is not just a battle for survival, but a fight for the soul of humanity exploring what it means to remain human in the face of dehumanizing forces. The Butlerian Jihad remains a defining chapter in the Dune mythos, offering rich commentary on technological power and the enduring human spirit. The aftermath of the Butlerian Jihad was as transformative as the war itself. 
radically altering human society and its relationship with technology. Following their victory over the thinking machines, humanity instituted a complete ban on the development of artificial intelligence. This prohibition became a cornerstone of galactic civilization, ensuring that no machine would ever again pose a threat to human autonomy. Without machines to rely on, humans had to fill the void left by AI with their own ingenuity. This necessity led to the formation of several powerful organizations. Mentats, human computers trained to perform advanced calculations and analysis. Mentats became indispensable to rulers and strategists, replacing the need for AI in decision making. Bene Gesserit, a secretive sisterhood that developed extraordinary mental and physical disciplines like political manipulation to guide human evolution and and influence galactic politics. Spacing Guild, responsible for monopolizing interstellar travel through the use of the spice melange, which enabled their navigators to safely fold space. This control made the guild one of the most powerful entities in the universe. The Orange Catholic Bible, a universal religious text compiled after the Jihad, codified humanity's new moral and technological boundaries. Its commandments, particularly the prohibition against AI, shaped societal norms and laws. The Jihad also fostered a cultural shift that prioritized creativity, institution, and spirituality over technological reliance. The suppression of AI created a paradoxical society that was both highly advanced and deeply reliant on human capabilities. While technological innovation continued in areas like biological and chemical engineering, humanity remained wary of any advancement resembling sentient machines. This wariness reinforced a rigid hierarchical society where power concentrated in institutions that could harness human potential. The Jihad's legacy endured for thousands of years, influencing every aspect of life in the Dune universe. It created a civilization both dependent on and constrained by its own rules, setting the stage for the intricate power struggles and philosophical conflicts that define Frank Herbert's saga. We are all just pieces on the board. Early reactions are calling it Game of Thrones but weirder or Game of Thrones in space. When you look at what went down 150-ish years prior, you can only expect that there's going to be a lot of backstabbing, a lot of mystery, and a lot of intrigue going into it. And it's going to be one giant game of chess. I'm really excited to see how this story develops and how they do it and how much they're going to adapt from the source material and how much they're going to take their own creative control and do kind of whatever they want to loosely base it on the source material and not make it a direct adaptation. That's really what I'm mostly curious about. Like, are you going to do it? Because originally this show was going to be called Dune Sisterhood and they changed it to Prophecy because they felt that really reflected what this series was more about. So I'm really curious what they're going to do there, how they're going to play along with that. I'm actually okay with deviating from the source material on a show like this because it is a series and you get to progress. But then you look at a show like Game of Thrones and how most of the success came when it was strictly adapting the source material. Of course, you make little changes here and there. So I'm really looking forward to it. It starts Sunday. Like I said, I'll be doing reviews and multiple videos throughout the weeks on it. You have shifting viewpoints on these characters. Do you feel like they're obviously the good guys and then events occur that change your mind about that? I just hope that it is an intriguing show that captures our imagination and our attentions. That is what I'm hoping. But I like slow stuff. So if it's slow, I'm not going to have a big problem with that. But I'm looking forward to it. Let me know how much you guys are looking forward to Dune Prophecy in the comments down below. I read and reply to all of them. And thank you so much for joining me today. It really means a lot to us here. So give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.